Hello everybody, happy holidays and welcome to another top 10 board gaming video. Today is all about bigger box gifts for the 2020 season. So obviously this has been a really crazy year with quarantine and all that kind of stuff, but it is November and that means it's time to start thinking about what to get your board gaming friends. So today I'm going to be talking about relatively large games. These are going to be bigger games that are a little more expensive, potentially a little bit more complex and all of that kind of thing. That said, I'm still trying trying to take into account a couple of very important things. First off, relatively recent games. I'm not looking at games that are really older uh, from the last couple of years. I'm trying to be a little bit more recent, especially games that have been released this particular year. And in addition, looking at player count as well and family friendliness. Because of the quarantine, it can be kind of tough to figure out how are we going to do this? How are we going to play? Because we can't play normally. All of that kind of stuff. But of course, that said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what your personal picks are. What do you think are going to be the major picks for all of the various board game secret Santas, all of that kind of stuff? What games are you hoping to get? What games are you planning on giving all of your board gaming friends? Let me know anything and everything in the comments below because you know I love to hear it all. But that said, we are going to go right on in with my number 10. At number 10, I've got Dune Imperium. This game is on the list mostly because I really, 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 really want it. I love the Dune series, and Dune Imperium seems like a wonderful new adaptation into the board gaming uh, realm. It is a brand new game that is just being released, and I believe is actually technically on pre-order still, but the fact is that it seems to take all of the intrigue, societal fascination, and all of that kind of stuff from the Dune series and shove it into a board game even more so than the original Dune board game that was released. That said, it's so low on the list because it's going to be really tough to find people to play with because if you're not able to go to a local game store or meet with your gaming friends, it's not exactly family friendly. It's pretty complicated, but still looks like a wonderful game. Dune Imperium, my number 10. And number nine, I've got Century Golem. Endless World. That's right, it's a game with three names. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Century Golem Edition has been around for a few years and it's been expanding quite a bit. Endless World is the newest expansion that actually allows you to put together essentially all of the various expansions. Century as a whole is very, very friendly, family friendly. It's really easy to learn, a ton of fun to play, and Endless World being the newest one is relatively big. It adds a couple of new mechanics, which seem like they're pretty interesting and seem like they could be pretty intriguing. So if you know people who have a board gaming family, it would be pretty perfect. But that said, it is a tough one to kind of jump into. Regardless, Century Golem, Endless World, my number nine. At number eight, I've got Chronicles of Crime. This game is a little bit older. It came out last year in 2019, but it's still on this list because of one main reason. That is, it is playable solo. In fact, it's almost better solo. The way that this game works is that it's a heavy logical deduction game where the idea is that you're trying to figure out who committed the crime. Everything is based off of an app that you have on a smartphone or a tablet, and so you have virtually endless replayability as the creators can constantly keep making new and different scenarios and all that kind of stuff. In addition, there is a new version of this game that's 1411 or something along those lines that I think is out now that you can get. So there is potential there, but still, Chronicles of Crime, as far as the theme, puts it a little bit lower on the list because not everybody loves logical deduction and puzzle type games, but it is still really fun. Again, playable solo makes it great in that context. And my number eight. At number seven, I've got Succulent, a great little board game about great little plants. Now, I don't know exactly what they are. I think they're miniature cacti, but the idea of Succulent is that you're trying to grow them in your garden. You're trying to make sure that they are watered correctly, that you have all the different species and all this sort of thing. So it's very reminiscent of things like Wingspan, Photosynthesis, Renature, where you've got this nice scientific theming tacked on with uh, some wonderful, absolutely gorgeous art as well. It's good for board gaming families. It's it's good for relatively new gamers because it's not super complicated, which is nice. And overall, again, it looks great. So it makes a wonderful gift. All in all, Succulent, my number seven. 
At number six, I've got Reef. This is a little bit of an older game, but for me personally, I'm a huge fan because I love saltwater aquariums and I have one myself. So the idea in this particular game is that you're actually growing coral specifically, and in that sense, it's very reminiscent of photosynthesis where you're growing trees. In this case, you're growing coral, trying to make sure that you've got the right types of coral, getting the right light, all of that sort of thing. You do have a light science theme. It doesn't go super in depth on it. It is something that's easy easily playable with people who know board games. It is pretty easy to teach and get into as well. Again, beautiful art, beautiful game, and it's about something that's very relevant in today's world, which is all about coral reefs. Reef all in all, my number six. At number five, I've got Wingspan. Yes, it's a bit of an older game, but it is still amazingly good. It is still a wonderful game to play. It is a little bit more complex when it comes to the actual gameplay style, but it has a huge bonus in that you can play it solo, and I absolutely love that. Of course, you do have wonderful, gorgeous illustrations of all the birds. You've got scientific names for them, not to mention new expansions that have come out this year as well as last year. Wonderful game, a ton of fun, lots of replayability, and it is very friend family friendly theme and you can actually learn some stuff from it. Wingspan all in all, my number five. At number four, I've got Calico, which is a game about cats. Specifically, this is a game where the entire point is that you are trying to make the most comfortable bed and quilt for an adorable little kitty. Come on, who doesn't want to play that? That is just the most adorable thing that has ever happened in anything ever. Literally though, that's the entire point, is that you are trying to entice cats to come over to you by making the most comfortable bedding and quilting so that they can lie on top of it. The art is very, very adorable. It's very well done. I think it's watercolor and um, I mean, everything looks the way it should and everything is super cute and really nice and very colorful. It's a great game, very family friendly and a ton of fun. Calico, my number four. At number three, I've got Papillion. This is an, a game that has a rather unique theme. That is, it's about butterflies. Specifically, you're building out a butterfly garden or a butterfly pavilion. If you've never been in one, I highly recommend that you do after this whole quarantine doodad is over, where the idea is that you just go inside and there's just butterflies flying all around. The idea in Papillion is very similar to some of these other games where you're trying to attract particular species of butterflies to your garden so that you can make visitors happy Happier by having more and unique and different types of butterflies, having them um, go into their larval stages and all that kind of stuff. You do have a good bit of the scientific aspect. The art, again, is absolutely beautiful, seeing the particular drawings of the different butterflies themselves. Really, really gorgeous, a ton of fun, and a theme that we really don't see too, too often. Papillion, my number three. At number two, I've got Parks. This is a little bit of an older one, but the fact is it is a great game that is about the national parks of the United States. A lot of people honestly don't know very much about the parks, and the thing is that this is the way that we can sort of virtually visit them. Especially now during quarantine, it's kind of nice that we can go, go around and see, you know, what's up with Yellowstone, what's up with the Grand Canyon, what's up with the Redwood Forests, all of this kind of thing. And you can go and you can sort of travel to them. You also have the other game, Trekking the National Parks, which is a very similar concept, a very similar theme, of course course, but uh, both of these games collectively allow you to travel around, go to the different parks, and essentially take care of them. Make sure that everything is going well, make sure that you've got uh, proper security rangers, all this kind of stuff, and that in general people are having fun as they visit the particular parks. So all in all, parks, my number two. At number one, I've got Tabletop Simulator. This is a bit of a cheat because, as you can tell by its name, it's not actually a game physically. This is a simulator game that is uh, available on Steam and allows you, at the base level, to play games like chess, checkers, backgammon, dominoes, and stuff like that. But you can purchase downloadable content for a lot of published hobby games. And most of these are from the actual creators of the games, where, for example, you've got my favorite, Cosmic Encounter 
Encounter, you've got Scythe, you've got Wingspan, you've got Ticket to Ride, all sorts of different games are available. So this is a wonderful gift for anybody who doesn't have it for a couple of reasons. First off, it doesn't require huge startup costs. It can run on a lot of different machines. You do not need to have a very powerful machine to actually run the thing. And secondly, it's very inexpensive. Thirdly, only one person in the entire great gaming group has to actually own the game itself, that is to say, Cosmic Encounter, in order for everybody else to join in and play it. And last but certainly not least is that you can play with your old gaming group. With all this stuff with quarantine and everything, we haven't been able to go out to the FLGS and play at normal game nights or even potentially at home. So this is a wonderful way to not only keep in touch with people that you're playing with actively, but if somebody moves away, this is a good way to keep playing games that you all know, love, and enjoy. That said, I know it's a bit of a cheat, but it's still a great game. Tabletop Simulator, my number one. Well, everybody, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this top 10 list of my favorite giftable board games for 2020. Like I said, I wanted to go with at least mostly newer games, and I'm sure that you guys saw kind of a theme running through there of going outside and seeing nature and having fun and doing all of that kind of stuff. Not that being stuck in quarantine for the vast majority of the year has had any effect on me whatsoever. But that said, there are a ton of great new games out there, and of course, there's a lot of of different tastes that gamers have. So I'm curious to hear what you all have to say. For you guys, what are on your personal wish list for this year? And what are you planning on gifting other people? Is there anything that you go to as your, this is the game that I'm going to give to any gamer, even if I don't know much about them? Do you have something specific in mind for specific people? Let me know how you do it. Let me know what your picks are. Every, anything and everything in the comments below, because you know I love to hear all of it. That said, if if you haven't done so already, please take a look at my social media pages where you can interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of fun ways. And of course, if you are still in quarantine, please stay inside, please stay safe. We will beat this thing, it will be done at some point, and we will be able to get back to at least some semblance of being normal. And of course, last but certainly not least, happy holidays to all of you. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you next time.